So in this video, I'm going to be calculating a probability using a probability density function. We're just going to jump straight into an example. So here's my uh, question. Find the probability that the random variable x is greater than 0.5, where the random variable x has a probability density function of this. All right. So there's a lot of, it's a pretty intimidating question, uh, but we're going to go into it step by step. First of all, I'm going to sketch that function. Now, you can kind of get away without sketching this function, but I really want to sketch that function just so you can see what it looks like. Now, you can see it's a piecewise function. Uh, let's deal with the top of the piecewise function first. Uh, it's a quadratic, 1.5 times 1 minus x squared. Uh, now, that's a quadratic function. Um, now, it's a quadratic function in a particular kind of form, uh, and it's in turning point form. Now, it has a maximum at 0, 1.5, and if you find the x-intercept, you'll find the x-intercept is there. So it's a quadratic that has this kind of a shape to it. Perfect. Um, and it's between 0 and 1. Between 0 and 1. Uh, this bit here, um, 0 if x is greater than 1 or x is less than 0. That's a line um, along the x-axis. So it's a straight line from here off into infinity, and it's a straight line from here off into infinity. x is greater than 1, boop, x is less than 1, boop. That means that the only really useful part of our probability density function is the first part of our piecewise. We create a piecewise because we need the function to go on forever in both directions. That's just kind of the convention of a probability density function. But really, the only bit we're interested in is this particular bit here. Now, what do uh, this bit and this bit represent? Now, this bit represents um, the scores. So, uh, x is greater than 0 0.5. This might be like a maths test. And so we're asking, uh, find the probability that a random person got more than 0 0.5 on the test. So here's 0 0.5. Um, now, this num these numbers here, we don't really talk about what these numbers are worth because they're not very useful. But what we can say is that the area under the curve between 0 0.5 and 1, x is greater than 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 and greater than 0 0.5, that's going to be our probability there. So we need to find the area under that curve. And you already know how to find areas under curve. So the probability that x is greater than 0 0.5, that the score that the student got is greater than 0 0.5, is equal to the integral between 1 and 0 0.5 of the particular function we're talking about, uh, 1.5, 1 minus x squared, with respect to x, of course. And now you already know how to integrate, so I'm not going to teach you how to integrate again. Now, what is worth noting is that this particular function is being multiplied by 1.5. The whole function is. So we can bring the 1.5 out the front and then just integrate what's in the brackets. So that's the integration of those brackets. And we're going between 1 and 0 0.5. So now we shove 1 in there, subtract, shoving 0 0.5 in there, and we'll spit out a number. So there's my integration step here. I've put 1 in, I've put 0 0.5 in, and now I'm just going to put that into my calculator and I'm going to get an answer. And the answer I get is 0 0.3125. Now, what does that mean? It means that the probability that, say, our random student uh, got an, a grade or a percentage more than 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.3125. And that's the area under this curve as a percentage of the full area. Now, the full area must be equal to 1 because it's a probability density function. And you can see that this is about a third of the full area of my quadratic. So that makes sense looking at that answer. So that's really what it comes down to with probability density functions. If you want to find the probability of a certain thing happening when it comes to a probability density function, find the area under the curve where that event is happening and you'll have your probability. 